Hi guys, it's Rorschach here. I just want to do a quick addendum to the last video, which was on um, War is Hell. Marvel, just doing a brief nod to the past, really, and uh, letting Howard Chaykin do a, a war comic. There isn't a lot of war comics in, in Marvel today, and even in this one, half of it isn't really a war comic at all. There's two stories, Swing for Boten and War Devil. Swing for Boten is the Howard Chaykin one, and we've got a a German pilot who is really quite fond of jazz. And um, in being fond of jazz, he isn't really a good Nazi. He's a bad... Well, he's a, he's a bad Nazi in the eyes of, of Mr. Goebbels, but um, a good German in, in, in um, the eyes of um, everybody else, right? So this pilot loves the jazz... And at the end of the story, I won't do the spoiler, there's a twist involving him and the jazz band that he wants to see. So He doesn't win his battle in the... I don't want to spoil it you know, for you too much. He doesn't win his, his dogfight, let's put it that way. And um, he's not too bothered that he doesn't win because... He's not about fighting for the, the fatherland. He's about <laughs> listening to jazz music and hanging out with um, um, people who Mr. Goebbels probably doesn't want him to hang out. So his loyalty is with pleasure rather than wanting Germany to be for Germans, I guess. There isn't any hero in the story. There's just a German who doesn't want to be a Nazi. So that's the story, okay? That's the, the story. Remember, a German who doesn't want to be a Nazi, no heroes. The The second story in the book is just a... It's a, a horror story, really. We've got a, a demon gin, an environmental demon gin. Uh, the spirit possessed the body of one of the hunters. It's a, it's a horror story. It's nothing really to do with um, Afghanistan because comic books are certainly not going to portray... Sad as it is to, to say this, the comic books of today are never going to portray American soldiers as heroes in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria and, well, probably be Iran next, won't it? Because there's, there's certain issues involving the soldiers and who they work for and what they're actually doing which nobody really wants to discuss because it makes everybody feel a little bit upset, doesn't it? Because um, reality starts to um, paint a picture that not a lot of people want to see. And also you've got the issue involving nationalism and um, who are the soldiers actually fighting for? Are they fighting for America? Right, if they're fighting for America, how come America hasn't got any borders? So there's lots of complicated issues that you need to, to touch upon if you were going to deal with real world events and war comics today. So Marvel, in a cowardly way, there's no other term for it, uh, instead choose not to really touch upon real world events involving anything that happened after you know 2001. So War is Hell is just going to be a one-off really as part of their 80 year um, celebration. And uh, yeah, all it's done is portrayed a, a German pilot who, who wants to listen to jazz. So what is it like then? What is this book like in comparison to a more traditional war book like Commando? This is the kind of comic book narrative that I would have enjoyed as a, maybe as a 12-year-old kid, a 12-year-old boy living in England. It was released in 2019. 12 January 2019, £2.25. Um, it's available in Australia and New Zealand as well, so perhaps not available in America. It's only a little in. <laughs> um, the books I used to get as a kid were, you know, this kind of size. But the artwork inside is certainly um, identical to the, the comic book artwork that I grew up with. So we've got the, the black and white artwork there. Uh, the story, it shares something in common with with Chaikin's story here 
in that the, the Germans, there they are, are portrayed as mostly just soldiers who are sort of going along with things because they have to. So they're not bad guys, but there is one. Um, he's the, what's they call him, Herr Lieutenant, I think. So the, um, the Herr Lieutenant is the Nazi and all the other soldiers are just, um, yeah, going along with it and cursing under their breath with the little bubbles there, so meaning that he didn't speak out these words aloud, he's just thinking this. Poor niece won't, um, won't return home thanks to your recklessness. So the, the most of the Germans don't like the person in charge, which of course plays in with the idea that, that Germany's been um, taken over by, by evil people. Uh, I don't want to dwell on that, but uh, remember that the, the National Socialist German Workers' Party were actually elected, but yeah, I won't, won't go into that. That's spiral onto another discussion. Anyway, the, the main difference then because they do share the, the good Germans and the Nazis dividing line. The main difference in this book is that there is a courageous, handsome, determined, uh, tough guy hero for young boys to identify with. Look at him there. So this is the kind of guy that you would want to be when you grow up, you know, which is why I was reading these books when I was a kid. This is why I was in the Boy Scouts, or the, we used to call them the, the Cub Scouts when I was a kid. I don't know what they're called today. I guess they're still called the Cubs, Cub Scouts. So what you're doing as a, a Cub Scout is you're going, it was every Wednesday I actually I went to the, the uh, to, went to the Cubs. And I'd probably be, um, you know, swapping comic books like this. Yeah, a little bit larger, but you know, pretty much the same thing with my mates. And all the the heroes would yeah be like this guy here you know handsome brave strong aspirational giving you something to to look up to and somebody who's um basically from your tribe and protecting your homeland which is what the uh, the english um, hero is doing here he's protecting his homeland from invaders and the invaders in this case are the nazis today we are still being invaded it's a little bit different now Rather than having an army come to our shores, we instead have um, activists working for various charities in fighting in the children, the refugees, the immigrants, in, in, into the country and then putting them in an enclave in the town and the town gradually starts to change in character um, to such a degree that London today is a, a murderous hellhole which is majority non-white. It's it's not a London that anybody in England would have voted for. So we have been invaded. But it's been a, a quiet, stealthy invasion enabled by our traitorous commie politicians from all parties. Yeah, it was something that, that uh, Enoch Powell warned about. But uh, no one listened to Enoch and his speech about rivers of blood, did they? And now uh, the literal rivers of blood are flowing through the streets of London because we have been invaded. So, yeah, the, the difference, going back to the, the comic books, um, between our Chaikin's version and the traditional version is um, the masculine hero. There, there is no masculine hero in Chaikin's um, book. Uh, it's just one, one German who doesn't want to be a Nazi. So I guess that's pretty telling, isn't it, that Marvel Comics today has a, strong, has a, a problem with strong, uh, masculine, aspirational heroes. Uh, mainly because, well, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the long march through the institutions. The culture war started off in the 1960s by the left has been 100% successful and they now own the comic book industry and the one thing that the left fears more than anything else is uh, uh, confident strong successful ambitious um, good moral men because well if that's what your men folk are like women will want to marry them and they won't want to marry the modern leftist matriarchal welfare state will they
So they have to get the men away from the women to the modern left because the modern left need the women. They need the, the single moms uh, voting for them. So you can't have aspirational men. You have to do the Gillette commercial type thing instead and tell them that they're all toxic. Tell them they're terrible and just continue to have the open border policy continue the stealthy invasion emasculate the men um, make the the female characters as empowered as possible tell them that they're brave tell them that they don't need no man and uh, just let them keep on voting for that matriarchal welfare state which will put a gun to the head of the man forcing him to pay resources to the stunning and brave young lady who's living in his house with a new boyfriend has poured commandos living down the caravan park down the road. <laughs> I just want to make one last point then before I, uh, <laughs> well, I finish this video, which has been a bit of a rambling rant as usual. Wouldn't it be interesting, right, if you took the idea of the Viking being pissed off that his country has been invaded, because that's what he's about here, he fights back, the ghost of the Viking does, against the evil Nazi. And uh, I'll show you the image of the Nazi falling off the cliff. So here's the bad German falling off the cliff. So the, the Viking warrior is not happy that his country has been invaded. Yeah, wouldn't it be interesting if the Viking ghost returned to modern day Norway, uh, looked at the vibrant diversity of the city life with the acid attacks the the rape gangs the no-go zones and all the other beautiful things that um, um diversity has has brought um his lands takes out his axe and starts doing something about it wouldn't that be interesting wouldn't that be a, a fascinating comic book to read to see what the ancient vikings think of what's happened to their their, their homelands what their politicians have done. Uh, maybe um, the Anglo-Saxon ghosts would return to England as well and do the same thing. Wouldn't that be fascinating? Don't hold your breath for it to happen. DC ain't touching it. Marvel ain't touching it. And Commando, is, it's, a, it's a World War II thing, so it's, I, I don't put any blame on them. They're still putting out strong masculine role models for the kids. They're not blurring things up with cultural relativism. There's good guys and there's bad guys. Um, in this book it's not complicated this is the kind of book that i'd be quite happy to give to my young son who doesn't exist <sighs> this book uh, or any other marvel comic book I, I wouldn't want my kids to be reading so i'll end the review there i think i said quite a lot in a rambly way thanks for checking it out please like and subscribe to the channel if you'd be so kind and hit the bell for instant updates because uh i don't think i'm going to be turning up on your subscription feed because you know what google is like so cheers guys take care and i'll be back as always later